Holy Spirit, shall we have it all to you? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It shall be open unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very good morning, everyone. Um, You're all very welcome, and we welcome any visitors we have to our church as well. You're most welcome. We welcome those who are watching online. We have people from Nairobi watching this morning, and also uh, Canada, and also even Belper. So we have uh, people watching from all over the world. Today is the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and I've had a busy weekend this weekend for a change. Um, uh, On Friday we had Bishop uh, Patrick, and and he, I should say, confirmed uh, 28 of our young adults, uh, and they were all empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we congratulate them later on. We also, uh, I had two baptisms, uh, young Sophie and young uh, Eden. They both uh, were baptised yesterday morning. Yesterday afternoon, I uh, celebrated a mass, um, uh, sorry, a nuptial mass, a wedding at uh, Hassop, and it was a very nice afternoon. And then I collapsed. (laughs) So we asked the Lord to uh, be with us this weekend, and shall we uh, begin our mass by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To Him be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, 
Glory to the Spirit, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all of our heart. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Resentment and anger, these are foul things and both are found with the sinner. He who exacts vengeance will experience the vengeance of the Lord who keeps strict account of sin. Forgive your neighbor the hurt he does you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If a man nurses anger against another, can he then demand compassion from the Lord? Showing no pity for a man like himself, can he then plead for his own sins? Mere creature of flesh, he cherishes resentment. Who will forgive him his sins? Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember dissolution and death and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not bear your neighbor ill will. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook the offense. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is the Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The The Lord Lord is is compassion compassion and love, love, slow slow to to anger anger and and rich rich in mercy. mercy. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The The Lord is compassion and love, slow slow to anger and rich in mercy. His wrath will come to an end. He will not be angry forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 I 
give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. Alleluia. 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 May the Lord be on your heart and on your lips that you may word proclaim his gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times. Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed him 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying, so his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the master's servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the debt. Now, as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly Father will deal with you unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, gentlemen. Very good morning, everyone. In 2008, when I had just been ordained by uh, Bishop Malcolm at the time, I had been working each summer. So the bishop said, before I send you to be the, the good-looking curate at the cathedral, um, maybe you should have a holiday first. And so I went off and I stayed with friends um, in Northern Ireland. Now, I spent most of my childhood going to Southern Ireland, to Dublin, where my parents are from. And I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And all I saw about Northern Ireland, which I hadn't been to before, was the times of the Troubles, of course. The, the uh, BBC's um, way of corresponding about it. So I only saw maybe the government side and the BBC side. I didn't really have the full picture and knowledge of Northern Ireland, really. So I went and stayed in Northern Ireland for three weeks, living on a farm and helping the farmer there. But what I did notice was that I toured around Northern Ireland, and I found uh, a few special things. First of all, I found peace in Northern Ireland. Yes, there's still pockets, even to today, there's pockets of terrorism, there's pockets of um, separation. But peace had come to the streets, and Catholic and Protestants were starting to learn how to live beside each other and work with each other. Less segregation. 
So I found that there was less anger maybe, less frustration, less fear. All of these things that existed most of my life growing up, um, I, I watched the news and I watched programs and, and I saw the anger and distress and revenge in people's voices and in their eyes. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. This is the troubles in Northern Ireland, Protestant against Catholic. And so when I went there, it was, it was lovely to experience that peace, different, uh, having a peace between um, the different uh, sides. Another time I went with my friend to Belfast, and I went for a, um, a bus tour around Belfast um, to the Falls Road and to the Parliament Building and so on. And as we got on, my friend is a nun, and uh, uh, Brona and I were in civvies. We weren't in our habits or anything. And as we got on the bus, Brona said to the um, conductor who was taking money for tickets, she said, I'm a nun and he's a priest. Can we have a discount? And he said, well, I'm a Protestant and you're paying double, sister. <laughs> and then he smiled and he said, actually, I'm a Catholic. You can get on for free. Off you go. So, of course, we had a free tour of Belfast. The final place that was really important and I go to every time I go to Ireland now was a Bushme Bushmills Whiskey Factory. It's my favorite place to go to, uh, to stock up. And so Northern Ireland means a lot to me now after having a lifetime of not knowing it at all. So as I leave Northern Ireland, I'm always full of the Spirit. St. Paul said in his writings, of course, to the Corinthians, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of those is love. We need faith in our lives to um, be in relationship with our Lord, be in community with each other. And so that faith journey is really important and, of course, to uh, receive the sacraments. Hope, hope that there might be peace, peace in Northern Ireland, peace all around the world, peace in our own community and home life. And then there is love. So, of course, faith, hope and peace are really important aspects for us to live our lives. But we can, and sometimes in our lives, we can have a hardened heart like the people of Meribah. We can have our hearts hardened because people have betrayed us, people have hurt us, bullied us. We are angry at somebody. We seek revenge. We, we think to ourselves, the wheel will turn. They will get their comeuppance. And when things go wrong for our enemies, we are glad inside. Or is that just me? We also, uh, you know, we, we hope sometimes that uh, um, they have bad luck. But this isn't a really good attitude to have, especially as we call ourselves Christians. But we all get angry. We all are vengeful. We all have feuds in our families. And sometimes they go on for so long, we forget what the feud, the original feud was about. Jesus lived and immersed himself in the world. He didn't shy away from problems. Jesus was surrounded by people who loved him, sought healing from him, sought teaching from him, but also there was people who would undermine him, betray him, entrap him, have him arrested. But Jesus learned to forgive. But it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible, anywhere in the New Testament, that Jesus was a doormat. Jesus argued back. Jesus kept people at arm's length. Jesus disappeared through the crowd. Jesus went to the other side of the, the, the lake. Jesus kept his boundaries with others. He wasn't a doormat. To be a Christian is not to be a doormat. It's about learning how to love and forgive even those who have trespassed against us, as it says in the Lord's Prayer. If we do not learn to forgive, if we do not learn to forgive those who have trespassed against us, then our heart will stay hardened, we will be vengeful people, 
and our spiritual veins will clog up. We will not die physically, but we will die spiritually because we will distance ourselves from God and the teachings of Jesus Christ. The hardest thing to do is to forgive. But sometimes we have to learn to forgive those who have trespassed against us, but still keep them at arm's length. They're not our kind of people, or they don't know their boundaries, and they may hurt us again. Avoiding people and keeping people at the distance doesn't mean that we don't have to forgive them. As soon as we start to forgive those who have trespassed against us and really hurt us in life, we start to live again. We start to heal again. We start to have faith, hope, and love again. Jesus asks us to forgive, and he was willing to go to the cross for that statement, to forgive. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We've all been angry. We've all been vengeful. But we all know how to love and forgive. Sometimes it takes reconciliation and building bridges. I always say to people, if you start to build your side of the divide and they start to build their side of the divide, then, of course, they will come together. Just like the people of Northern Ireland, we remember Mo Molan. She worked really hard to bring to the Protestants and Catholics together in conversation. And it's really important that we build from both sides, not just wait to be apologized to, but to be brave enough to be Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we stand and confess and proclaim our, our creed? Shall we say the Nicene Creed together? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our pilgrimage on earth enables us to share the path that Jesus walked and we endure suffering like he did. We remember his sacrifice for us, knowing that it brought him glory and that it might, in the way we live our lives, do the same for us. The response is, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the whole church be guided and governed by your Holy Spirit. Let all Christians be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the victims of Morocco's earthquake, those who have died and those who have been made homeless through this terrible tragedy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the victims of the Libyan floods, with the fear of over 20,000 people dead and many traumatised, we pray that the world will come to their aid. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We continue to pray for those who have been displaced by war across the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the homeless and all those displaced by family strife, domestic violence and mental health issues. May God's mercy and compassion create an end to their plight. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the deceased members of our parish and those whose anniversaries occur this coming week. May their souls and the souls, souls of, of all the faithful, faithful departed, departed through the, the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. We ask Mother Mary, Queen of Peace, to intercede for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Finally, let us pray for uh, those who received confirmation on Friday from Bishop Patrick. We ask the Lord and the Holy Spirit to empower them to live out in the world as Christians. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to be seated as we prepare our altar. are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Bless are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this wine we offer fruit of the earth, work of our hands, it will become the cup of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Mass intention is for, firstly, yourselves and your families here on earth and in heaven. We ask the Lord to be with us this coming week. We also pray, uh, especially today, first of all, um, uh, Tessa would like to remember her husband Peter, Peter Healy. It's his anniversary this weekend. So we ask the Lord to watch over uh, Peter in the banquet of heaven. The Liversidge family would like to remember the repose of the soul of James Seven uh, from the Woodsmith uh, Mine. So we ask the Lord to be with uh, James and his family at this time. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, 
Rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated or kneel. Thank you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter, St. James, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession, in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to your, chil gather to your children and scatter throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we especially pray for the people of Morocco and Libya and all those who have died. Give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever, and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, your and with a bow and handshake, we offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace, Amanda. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Peter said to Jesus, How often must I forgive those who have trespassed against me? Seven times. And Jesus says, No, seventy-seven times. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
In a moment, myself and uh, Deacon Richard will distribute Holy Communion. And we have gluten-free hosts. If anybody's gluten-free, let me know as you come forward. If you don't normally receive communion in the Catholic Church, then just put your arm across your chest and that will let me know. And if you're a visitor, um, please uh, wait in your pew and you'll be guided forward as we have no side aisle. We come in a certain order. Before that, shall we send a spiritual blessing of communion to those who are watching online today? Dear Lord, be with our parishioners, our sick, our housebound, and those watching around the world. May the Lord walk with you, and may you forgive others who trespass against you, and may you stay in faith with the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
bless you. Have a good week. Nice to see you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, Maria. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The Almighty God bless you. Body of Christ. The Almighty God bless you. Have a good week. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, John. Body of Christ. I'd like to call forward, um, so we can witness them being embarrassed, um, I'd like to call forward our confirmation, those young people who have received confirmation on Friday. So that's so we know from our Mass which uh, our young people received uh, confirmation. Come forward. You can see that they've all got halos over them now. They all look completely different because the Holy Spirit has awoken them. I'm very proud of you. The bishop was very impressed uh, with the singing, um, with the reading, with the serving. Uh, Fred did the serving. He said the serving was average. Um, but, uh, but no, thank you very much. Uh, I was, I was um, uh, very proud and uh, the bishop said you were very respectful and, and it wasn't a circus like he goes to some parishes. He said we were very... He said there was a, a real good, a beautiful feeling about it. Everybody wants to be here, so, so that, that's great. And uh, you, you, all got, you, you all got it right as well when you came forward. Um, the only thing I was disappointed was, in my day, the bishop would slap us across the face. I was disappointed that the bishop didn't slap you in the face. But apart from that, um, everything went well. Um, so let's give our young people a big round of applause. I don't want you to think I'm a, I'm a miserable parish priest. They got the certificate and they got their gift on Friday night. They're not getting another one. Off you go, off you go. Thank you. I just wanted to notice this. There's tea and coffee in our hall. You're most welcome. If you're, if you're a visitor, um, you're, it's just next door here. Tea and coffee and uh, biscuits galore. You'll see on the front of the bulletin, it's got... I think some good words to reflect upon today. Forgiving is forgiving. When we start to forgive, then we will receive tenfold back, I'm sure. So let us be forgiving people. Today is Home Mission Sunday, where we support the, uh, the spreading of the gospel around the world, those who do not know Christ, and uh, to evangelize the gospel. So if you'd like to uh, either take an envelope and bring it back next week, 
or there will be a basket as a retiring collection on the way out today, just um, uh, on the way out today. So please um, support the church in spreading the good news across the world. Everything else is in your bulletin. There's a, there's a, a date for a, a Eucharistic Ministers of Communion um, date for early October. And all the, uh, if you, maybe if you um, cut out the confirmation bit of the bulletin, and maybe put it in your prayer book, because all the confirmation students' names are in there, it might be nice for you to pray for them. There's also a link to the Morocco earthquake. When this bulletin went to print, uh, Libya, the flood in Libya hadn't happened, so next week I will put a, a link in if you wanted to give charitably to uh, the Libya uh, Relief Fund as well. But there's um, Oxford, o Oxfam and Red Cross in there. They're at the heart of it. Um, and of course, there's CAFOD as well. But um, I know that Red Cross and Oxfam are on the, uh, the cold face at the moment. So we ask the Lord to be with them. Thank you for your continued financial support of the parish. Shall we stand and pray? And Fred, I was only joking, you are a great server, okay. <laughs> May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's nice to welcome Deacon Richard back. Richard always has um, the month of August off? August off. It keeps us from um, uh, divorcing uh, because he, I said I get a month off from you and he said, Father, I get a month off from you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was a boy, this was my favourite hymn. Go the masses and dead, children of the Lord. Take his word to others, as you've heard it spoken to you. Go the masses and dead, go and tell the world. The Lord is good, the Lord is kind, and he loves everyone. Go the masses and death, take his love to all. Gladden all who meet you, fill their hearts with hope and courage. Go the masses and death, fill the world with love. And give to all what you receive, the peace and joy of Christ. Thank you, gentlemen. Is ended, strengthened in the Lord. Lighten every burden, spread the joy of Christ around you. Go, the Mass is ended, take his peace to all. This day is yours to change. Make God known and love.